Hey guys, it's Megan with MeganNicole.com and today I'm sharing my best tips for making the perfect balloon garland every single time. Alright, so I'm pulling up my list. Okay, so tip number one is a tool, but I promise, my husband's not going to stop saying I promise so much, but I do promise. I promise that this tool is so worth it, and it's the balloon pump. So this baby's like 20 bucks on Amazon, and it is so worth it. I won't do a balloon garland unless I have this with me. I don't even want to use a hand pump, and I'm definitely not blowing them up myself. So even if you're just going to do a handful of balloon garlands every year, like you're doing it for your kid's birthday, for your husband, for your friend, or if you have a couple baby showers coming up, wedding showers, any kind of celebration, I used it for work events too. Um, even if you're just doing a handful of them in a year, I think it's so worth it. It's 20 bucks. We've all spent $20 on things that we've thrown away. Like this is so worth it and it's not that expensive. And this is linked in the description below. It'll pull up my Amazon storefront and actually like all of my favorite like party supplies or supplies that I've used for different parties um, will be all in that storefront. So yes, pump. If you ask me, it's absolutely necessary to make a balloon garland. The hand pumps are great, I guess. I've actually never even used one. Okay, so number two is using the chair technique. So the chair technique is when you take, let me grab it one. If you're making a balloon garland with a strip, these have lots of names, strip, balloon tape, balloon ribbon, whatever, but it's just this plastic ribbon with holes in it. And if you're making your balloon garland with one of these, then what I do is take the end, add a piece of twine to it, tie the twine to a chair, and then do the same thing on the other end, and then stretch the strip across the room. And that makes it so much easier to put my balloons on as I blow them up. Much easier than hanging your strip first and then trying to add the balloons. I think using the chair method or the chair technique makes the balloons just kind of fit and flow better. And it actually makes the balloon garland look fuller with less balloons. But it just makes it a lot easier. Plus, if you're trying to put your balloon garland up high and you're short like me, that's going to get very tiring to try and place each balloon. And I also know that once the balloon garland is placed on the wall or wherever I'm putting it, I usually still maneuver balloons and it does wear me out and it makes my other balloons pop off and that just drives me crazy. So I highly recommend the chair technique if you're using one of these strips. Tip number three is to use a variety of balloon sizes. So as you see, I'm using my board and batten wall and I've made several balloon garlands for this space in my home for different celebrations and I'm used to how many balloons I need to make a decent garland. And for the garland that you see here for my mom's fiesta dinner that we threw her for her birthday this year, I used three 18 inch balloons, 12 ish, 12 inch balloons, and then 10 ish, five inch balloons. I just think that adding the variety makes it so much more interesting looking and almost even more professional. I've seen balloon garlands and I've made balloon garlands with just like the regular 12, 10 inch balloons and they look fine. I just think it adds more dimension and like I said, just makes it look a little more professional. Tip number four is to use balloon tape. I call it tape because that's what I've always seen it as and up until recently they're starting to call it balloon strips, which is what I talked about earlier. And like I said, it's just a plastic ribbon with holes in it and you just stick the balloon knot through the hole. Just make sure the actual knot of the balloon goes through the hole and not just like the end of the balloon because otherwise it'll make it easier for the balloon to pop out. Now there are other ways to make balloon garlands without the balloon tape balloon strip. I've actually never made one like that before. That's not true. I made one for our engagement party using like a needle and thread and threaded the needle through all of the um, balloon knots, which was doable and it turned out cute, but you just can't really do anything with it afterwards. So it's like you make it and if you don't like it or if you don't have much experience making balloon garlands, it might not turn out right and there's really not much you can do about it. And that was like way before I even started making it with making balloon garlands with strips. 
But if you're a beginner, I do recommend using this strip. Oh, and I usually get a lot of questions of where you find the balloon strips. I usually order balloon kits off Amazon because I'm wanting like different colors that I might not already have. And they always come with one of these. And you can reuse them, which is cool. So I have a ton of these. So if I cut one, I'll mark it and say how long it is or about how long it is. And then I can always reuse it. If you don't order a or if you don't get a balloon kit and you buy your balloon separate, you can get these individually, and that's also linked in my description box below. Let me grab a balloon for this one. Okay, so my balloon tip, what number is this? Number five is to stretch your balloons before you blow them up. So this is just kind of like I always use this reference, and it's probably getting, getting annoying. Just think of it as warming up your muscles before you're working out. You're warming up the balloon before you blow it up. Another tip that I've heard before, and I have tried it, but I'm not good about doing it with every single balloon, is to blow it up twice. So blow it up once, let the air come out, and then blow it up again, because that's another way to stretch it. Like I said, I don't usually, I'm trying to make these pretty quick, either between nap time or before Stetson goes to bed so I don't wake him up with this. Um, so I usually don't have that much time to blow them up twice. But that's another tip if you're really concerned about your balloons deflating. Also, so the balloon garland you see behind me is what I used for my mom's fiesta dinner that we threw her over a month ago. So as you can see, it still looks really good. Just my little balloons, the balloon dot, the balloon dots, mm -mm, the glue dots don't stick as well. So like this one was supposed to be up like this and it popped off. But just to show you, these babies last. Okay, so tip number six is to shoot for more of a bubble shape than a balloon shape. Okay, so I don't really want to use this right now because Setson is sleeping right above me. <laughs> so I am gonna blow this one up even though I just said I never blow them up myself, but I'm gonna blow this one up. Okay, so yeah, I would not wanna do that <laughs> a million times. Um, so this is more like a balloon shape, right? So go ahead and blow it up to this shape and then release until you make more of a bubble or like a round shape. This shape just looks better in a garland and makes it look more professional. Also, you never want to blow a balloon up all the way to like max capacity because then it's most likely going to either pop or prematurely deflate. Most of you are probably making your balloon garlands a few days in advance and if you blow your balloons all the way up, you're going to have a sad looking garland when you wake up in the morning. So yeah, so think bubble shape not balloons. Okay, tip number seven is to use the tape trick if you don't have hooks. So I've actually not gotten to use this tip before, but I saw it on, oh, I already cut that open. But I ordered some of these 260 balloons, also linked in the description box below. So if you don't have like command hooks or you don't want to put command hooks on the wall, or you don't have hooks to already hang them from like I do on my board and batten wall. We already have those hooks, so I usually just use those. Um, if you just don't have a convenient place and you just your last resort is to use tape, you can do so without damaging your wall. So you tape the 260 balloon or some string to the wall and add two more pieces of tape to either end. I would suggest using painter's tape. And then use the 260 balloons or string to tie onto the garland. So that's just a really cool hack to hang it if you don't have hooks to use. So okay, so tip number eight is to double stuff your balloons. One reason why you might want to double stuff is to change the color. So let's say this color that I'm using is too dark and I want more of a muted tone of it. So what I need to do is stuff this balloon inside this one. And an easy way to do that, on my blog I say use a straw, but I don't have a straw down here but so I'm gonna use a pencil. So I would stuff it using a straw or something like that, or like a pencil or a pen. And then you can blow them up and you'll get more of a muted tone of your original color. So this, I mean, this color is actually really pretty as is, but let's say you're using like a really bright green and you wanna tone it down for maybe like a baby shower or something, then you would throw either a black or white, depending on what you wanna do with the color, you throw a black or white balloon on top of it. And that's a good way of doing so. Okay. Let's see, that was tip number eight. Tip number nine, glue dots. 
Okay, so blue dots. Usually when you order a balloon kit, again, you get the balloon strip, and then they usually give you a roll of these. And these are just like sticky dots. It's just a roll of them. I usually assemble my entire balloon garland, which if you watch any other videos, you know this. So I assemble my whole entire balloon garland, so the 18 inch and the 12 inch, and then I add my little five inch balloons using these. So I do not attach my five inch balloons to the balloon strip. Instead, I just fill in gaps in my balloon garland. Like let's say I'm hiding a knot or there's like a two colors of the same color touching each other and it just looks funny. I take my five inch balloons and kind of break that up using these. I usually put two on each balloon, one on either side of the knot. And that way I can just take it and place it in my balloon garland and it's good to go. I will say if you're making your balloon garland way in advance, the only thing with these is they don't last a long time. I made my balloon garlands one to two days before my party or my celebration and they hold up just fine for that. Maybe a couple of them will pop off, but not too bad. So just have some extra. Um, but if you're making your balloon garland more than two days before, you might want to use a different method. Again, that's linked below as well. Is that it? Oh yeah, that was mine. So that's it for my tips today. I hope you find them very useful and they come in handy for your next balloon garland. And also thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys on the next one. Have a great day.